before I wanted to be a lawyer or a princess or a sailor scout, I wanted to be a Bond girl. And after thinking about it, and with the release of the new Bond film Skyfall, I thought what better time for my channel Fashion Forward to do a little piece on uh, the style of the Bond girl. What is it that really makes her so desirable, so fashionable, so fantastically fabulous that it draws the attention of men and women alike? And of course, the thing that captures the attention of our fabulous Mr. Bond every single time. Now granted, each woman is different, she brings her own unique flair to the films, whether it is the more conservative Bunny Penny, who's mainly throwing, uh, you know, darts back and forth with Bond in terms of their witty repartee, or whether it's somebody more like Halle Berry's character of Jinx, who shows up gun-toting and wearing her leather one-piece, which definitely caught some people's attention, or even Vesper Lind, who begun as something of a stiff, kind of uh, very tense woman, and then ends up dazzling everyone in that gorgeous, gorgeous purple gown. All of these women, although different, have the same sense of something that they bring to the screen. In fact, whether it's the characters who are rocket scientists, or geniuses, or villains, or arm candy, or assassins, every single Bond girl has some things that are key and common. They have their sensuality, they have their confidence, they have the ability to match James's wit every time he makes a comment, they can fire one back really, relatively quickly, and usually they're able to hold their own in most kinds of fa fights or action sequences as well. Now, these girls aren't always the action-y type, but they are never the wallflowers. They aren't the shrinking violets either. These are the women that are able to hold their own, they're able to stand up and fulfill a certain amount of confidence and sex appeal that not every woman can achieve as effortlessly as they make it seem. So I'm just going to go through here and we're going to do a quick rundown of some of the things fashion-wise that builds a Bond girl. So let us start with the accessories because really the accessories are the little bits and pieces, the small details, and also I really want to save the gowns to the end because they're my favorite part. So in terms of the accessories, Bond girls don't have a lot of lingerie going on, but they tend to do a lot of um, revealing of themselves, uh, especially in terms of like, you'll see them often with like blankets wrapped around them, and so like their back is bare. So they don't really have much in the way of underwear, but they have a lot of showing else what would be under the underwear. However, if we're going to go for a Bond girl look ourselves, while I can't dive right into what the uh, lingerie aspect fully would look like, I think one of the definite essential pieces would be some thigh-high lace top stockings. Now, I like the kind of smoky black look because I find that it's really sophisticated and it's also really sexy. Of course, they do come in twos, so it's just it's a fantastic and really fun piece, and you can pair it with something a little more casual to sex it up a bit, or pair it with something a little bit more formal because you can't always wear bare legs. Now, what's on their feet? Well, I have two different options here, and they're both very, very different. The first pair are tall. They have the patent leather and the suede. It's black suede and black patent leather, so there is some contrast there. The heel is really sexy. It's very tall. It's a platform-type pump, so it's going to make you stand even taller, which I find adds an extra layer of confidence, and there's definitely something really hot about a woman that can rock patent leather because there is something about that that's a little bit more bad girl than your typical shoe. However, the suede really makes sure that you don't look too, like, schoolgirl-esque. It adds an extra bit of badass to the shoe. Now, for our second style of shoe, and perhaps if this is the bad girl shoe, then we'll look at the good girl shoe. We've got black satin, and it's a similar thing. It's the pump. It's got a thinner heel. Uh, but it's definitely still a very sexy shoe. It's got a little shine to it, which is uh, what the satin does. And I love this shoe. I think that it's just, it's effortlessly classic, it's elegant, and it's sexy beyond all belief. So those are the shoes. Next on to some of the other accessories that we've got here. Now, in terms of necklaces, they don't really seem to have ones often that are like totally stand out, like shock, you'll remember it. However, one of my favorite pieces that always makes me think of Bond Girl is this one here. Now this is a choker, and it's an antique choker. So once you put it on, it's gonna go right around the neck like that, and it's got these little, it's not real diamonds, but it's like little crystal-y kind of glass crystals, and it's got a nice shine to it. So it's definitely simple, but it's not gonna overwhelm your gown, because obviously the gown is the thing that really makes the Bond Girl look. Now, for those of you who remember uh, The World Is Not Enough, Electra King 
had that damage done to her ear during uh, her hostage situation where she lost part of her earlobe. So instead of wearing regular traditional earrings, she had earrings very similar to these ones. Now these are super unique and really, really cute. They've got kind of a, a tribal pattern to them and they're silver. And basically how these ones work is instead of piercing the ear, they've got these little bear ball bearing sort of things there. And you literally, you slide your ear in. Let's see if I can do it without looking in a mirror. I don't think I can. This actually might be the wrong ear for it. Hold on. Let me try again with this side, because it looks really cool when it's on. There we go. Okay, and then that's in. It's comfortable. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't require a piercing. And it just covers the entire lobe of the ear. So if you are a Bond girl who has been held captive by a psychopath who has sliced off part of your ear to send it to your father for ransom, then afterwards you can wear this dazzling design on your ear to conceal the damage. Now, whenever a woman is introducing herself, especially to someone like James Bond, they tend to do the whole handout and, you know, you know, just to introduce themselves. And the best way to introduce yourself with your hand out is to make sure that that hand is saying a statement. So, oftentimes you will see, and it's not, again, not something that's totally overwhelming, but you'll see some really beautiful rings on the fingers of our Bond ladies. Uh, specifically, generally, it's the, the ones that are wealthy, not the ones that are working in, like, a nuclear reactor. But, so we have ones like this one, which I don't know if you can see really well. It's a diamond, it's in white gold, and it is encrusted, or it's a, an, a, a, sorry, an emerald encrusted with diamonds in white, a setting of white gold. And it's absolutely gorgeous and super comfortable. Or, if you want something that's a little bit more unique, you can get the Iolite surrounded by diamonds, and this is in yellow gold. So, nothing really says, like, hello, Mr. Bond, quite like offering up your hand with a stunning piece of dazzling jewelry that doesn't quite overwhelm, but certainly draws the attention and the focus to the fact that you are no average lady. And then, of course, because our Bond girls are never helpless, another great piece, and I really love this one, is more than just a fashion accessory. So you take a look at it and you go, what a beautiful dragon, right? And you can put it around your neck to wear it as a necklace. Now, this chain is a little bit long, longer than I'd like it to be, but for the sake of, uh, you know, this, it's fine. So when you look at it, it's a regular dragon. However, for our Bond girl, if she finds herself in distress or needing to be a little sneaky, uh, we can actually take the tail out and there's a blade hidden within the tail. So definitely an accessory for any bad girl or Bond girl that wants to, uh, have a little hidden weapon just in case. And now on to my absolute favorite part, which is the dresses. Now there are two different types of Bond dresses that you'll find. One of them being the kind that is covered in beautiful beading. It's like absolutely gorgeous. Lots of different colors, lots of different style to it. And so for that example, I have this here. And this is an absolutely gorgeous gown. It's a one of a kind gown. And it's got, as you can see, beading all over it. The color fades to the bottom. It's very fitted. It'll fit right down the body. There's no slit on it. Um, and so you're, but it gives you enough room because there's a lot of skirt to the bottom that you can actually walk really comfortably. The back of this dress is completely open. There's uh, fitted stays in here. So it fits like a corset. And this you lace right up and it's absolutely stunning. And again, 120 hours of hand done beading, all hand done dye job. It's absolutely gorgeous, and it's got the sparkle that's gonna catch the eye, it's got the colors that's gonna catch the eye and the attention. This is a dress that any Bond girl would be proud to wear. However, if the sparkles and the beads are not quite your thing, and you're a little bit more of the satiny type, we certainly have that option as well. Because the other alternative for the Bond girl, if she doesn't like the beading, is the slick, smooth satin. Now this is a garnet satin, it's absolutely gorgeous. It was described to me as an Oscar winner type of dress and it really is. And it's got this beautiful beading here on the strap and it's got gathered with the beading here. The back of this dress is gorgeous, it's very low and it'll actually give you, like part of your back will be out because this part is up at the top here. And another great and very sexy trait about this dress is that it's got a slit to the side. So as you're walking, you're going to get a little peep show of leg. So if you are a Bond girl who likes the glitz and the glam, then you can definitely go for the more beaded variety. But if you like the satin sort of sex appeal there, there is also that style. So those are the two kind of Bond girl dresses that we have.
So we've gone through the dresses, we've gone through the shoes, we've gone through the accessories, we've gone through the attitude. Now, at this point, ladies, I am trusting that all of you could pull off a relatively reasonable Bond girl look. Now, again, things like makeup and whatnot always differ, and I can't really coach you on how that would be. Uh, most of them tend to go for fairly neutral makeup. Uh, a lot of them will have um, kind of a, a slightly accentuated lip, but nothing too crazy. And up until lately, the nails weren't really overdone either, although in the most recent Bond Girl film, she had intensely colored lips and intensely dark nails. Um, but if you want to have something that I would consider anyway uh, a Bond Girl worthy nail, you could go for something that is more of this if you want the kind of money penny look. This is a very neutral, kind of white, very elegant. Or you could go for something that's more of a gunmetal, which is what I'm wearing right now. And both of those are totally suitable. And if neither of those ones work, let's see here what we've got in our treasure trove of nail polish. Because I've got a lot of it. You might want to go for something like this one. This is by Revlon. It's called Devilish. And it's this very dark kind of burgundy plum. It's almost black, but not quite. And it definitely has a, a bit of a sexy feel to it. Now, whether you would pair any of those polishes with these gowns, uh, that's debatable. But certainly some ideas for you if you ever decide that you really want to create the Bond Girl look. And don't forget that the best thing that a Bond Girl can have is a total hunk in a tuxedo standing right beside her. So that's all for me for now, and I will see you guys next week. I'm actually getting my wisdom teeth taken out uh, tomorrow. So I will not be doing any videos for a while because my mouth will be bruised and swollen and awful and gross. But until next time, I hope that you guys all are having a wonderful beginning to the holiday season. And don't forget to keep your best fashion forward. Bye, guys.